Um, I found this a couple months ago actually and have been meaning to buy it and sort of do a review video of it, uh, but I just bought it the other week. Um, um, point journal just sounds really dumb, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway, um, this, this uh, little, yeah, I might have to do a bit more digging online to find that out. Um, that's not something I'm likely to use. I'm not, I, I do like having um, ribbon notebooks, definitely. Oh, sorry, ribbon bookmarks. That's the word I'm looking for. But, um, so I like having the bookmarks, but I'm not likely to use a plastic bookmark that sticks out because that's going to be annoying in my bag. And as there's no electric, elastic closure, it's definitely going to like, if you're dropping that down, that's going to fall right out. But anyway, it's, um, uh, that's fine for people who carry a lot of their bullet journaling supplies with them anyway in like a bag. So if you've got your stash of pens that you use and various different washi tapes and stuff in like a carry bag, that can go right in. It might still be a bit long for a pencil bag. Um, it's certainly too long for the, for the book, but whatever. And I think, um, Anyway, um, like I said, it's triangular. I don't know why anyone makes triangular pens. Maybe, maybe some people do find them more comfortable. I find them really um, quite awkward and painful. Uh, but anyway, I prefer round pens, like um, is the standard, I guess. Um, even having, some people don't like having a contents page because they don't necessarily use it. And so the whole point of the bullet journal is to be fully customizable and so if you've got a built-in contents page that's not really fully customizable if you don't use the contents page um so this is obviously going to tell me how to do all of that how to make a contents page and everything uh what you need you need your fine liner um let's see yeah a sharp pencil and an eraser come in handy if you're marking out headings, lines, and decorations, obviously that's for people who do quite a bit of artwork in their bullet journal, which I really don't do. I just go in with my pen, like it, mine's very basic and standard. Um, they're telling you to have a highlighter and maybe a fountain pen if you like one. Obviously, no one needs to be told that they need basic supplies. Uh, that's a bit silly. And then they're telling you that you might want a circle stencil. I don't think that's at all necessary either. Um, stickers, yep. Sticky flags and washi tape, those are always fun. So yeah, it kind of talks about washi tape a bit, that's cute. Um, and then the point journal system. Now, oh, I've just seen, so their logo that's on the box, they're obviously using this very specific set of um, tasks and signifiers. Those are their bullets. Um, yeah, so you can see, let's see, on the top of this box, whoops, which I'm totally messing up, on the top of that box they have those same signifiers here, so I didn't realize that was actually their, like, um, I guess they're making that kind of proprietary in a way. Um, yeah, so they've told you to make a table of contents. To maximize space in your TOC, divide each page into two or each even three columns. Try color coding your entries by type too to make things even easier to find. That's a great idea if you don't do threading. Um, I do a lot of like um, continuation of my collections and threading and stuff like that and so my I need my table of contents to have to be across the page. Basically I put my topic here and then I just continue adding page numbers as I've moved ahead in my journal. Um, so obviously that's these are there are different ways to bullet journal. Um, this one does not work for me. Okay so Yep, there's the actual table of contents for this book on page 10, um, but it's a good demonstrator of how to make a table of contents, I suppose. Then we have the year planner. Um, they give you some, a little bit of a layout here. Oh geez, that's quite cramped. I don't know who can fit their entire year in that, but whatever. Anyway, obviously to each their own. Ooh, this is not bound very well. Okay, so they've got like this little, that's cute, okay. Um, <laughs> So it's this cute little notebook and they've done like a stitch binding on it, but they've done it off-centered. Um, so I can't quite turn the page properly. So that's funny. Um, anyway, uh, monthly planners. Um, so there's your sort of monthly log. That's a fairly typical writer's um, uh, version of doing a monthly log. Um, I do like how they're not calling anything a log. They're calling it a planner because they don't want to... 
uh, encroach on the bullet journal system's um, terminology. They're using completely different terminology to try to distance themselves from that, despite the fact that this is very clearly the bullet journal method and the bullet journal system that they're just basically ripping off. Um, daily calendar pages. Now this one would be like, this would be the version of the daily log that a lot of people do where they sort of, they separate out their pages and like they allocate space to each day, which I don't do. I follow writers sort of like original method of if Monday has a lot going on, then Monday gets a lot of space. If Tuesday doesn't have anything going on, Tuesday gets hardly any space. So like just making the day as you come to the day, not planning it ahead. Um, but they are clearly, yeah, sort of planning it ahead. They're doing little symbols to indicate, well, I had two glasses of water, a coffee, and a sugar sweetened beverage. Um, ooh, a little cocktail down here. I'd need more of those, I think. Um, yeah, and then sort of the weather. Uh, and they've used, they've obviously um, given examples of cute little um, like flags and headings, whatever they're called, headers. Okay, and then we jump into the symbols. It's interesting, it's interesting that they've saved the symbols for quite far back, because I think, I feel like that's both um, writer's first thing that he covers is the symbols, but I could be wrong. I can't remember exactly how the bullet journal website is set up. Um, but, but symbols are like, they are pretty key to this system. Um, symbols are the last key element of a point journal system. They're a fast way of categorizing each item you write in your yearly, monthly, or daily planners. Here's our list of su suggested symbols for you to use, adapt, and add to with spaces below where you can write your own. So they're sort of giving you an option to plan out. I just think this is so funny that they're really claiming this as their own, like um, the last key element of a point journal system, a point journal system, as if that's like something uh, new that, they, that they've that they invented somehow. I don't know. It's just a bit cheeky, I think. Um, and then we get into habit trackers, lists, goals. They're sort of saying other things that you can add, and they've got some different examples. So here's a habit tracker with um, healthy habits, yoga, water, reading books, and they've just done a really simple smiley face, sad face. Um, then we have a birthdays collection, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Sort of telling you to like have fun, be artsy with it, get creative. Um, so that's all pretty basic. That's like that's a real basic um, introduction to the bullet journal system, but in a less succinct and less um, less sort of creative and um, I guess open way than other other things I've seen. And obviously, um, writer Carol isn't the only person who's sort of written books about how to bullet journal. There are tons of other books out there. Um, uh, but yes, this is kind of, <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of the most boring version I've seen, I guess is what I'm trying to say, um, which is fine. Like it's, it's fairly basic. The bullet journaling isn't that, isn't rocket science, I suppose. Um, yeah. Okay, so then we jump into the point journal system. Now, it's interesting, I just noticed that their sort of logo that's on the box is actually, I didn't realize this before, but it's actually their signifiers. So this is what they're suggesting you use as your um, your bullets or your tasks. And then we go into the year planner. Um, they've only got one suggestion of a layout, which I think is interesting because it's a really crappy layout. Like this gives you no space to write in key dates like like I could not plan my year ahead with this um, but it, it's not so far off of what a lot of people do use it's just for whatever reason so so much smaller and crappier um, yeah and they sort of yeah they okay they do acknowledge there are lots of ways you can set up the year planner um, but they've only sort of given one and same thing with the monthly planner. So now this monthly planner is a lot more standard. This is writer's actual method of doing the, your monthly log. Um, and then they have these daily calendar pages. So this is sort of um, going along with a lot of people who pre-plan their week and they, uh, they allocate a certain amount of space to each day of the week. 
Um, now I can't do that because some days are a lot busier than other days. My Monday might have tons and tons of stuff and then my Tuesday might have nothing. Um, and so I use writers like more typical version of like when it comes to Monday, I write Monday wherever I am in my page. If I'm if I've already filled up this much of the page and it's Monday, I'm gonna start Monday here and hoping that I don't like go over, but at any rate, even if I do, that's not the end of the world. So like I'll do all of Monday and then when I get to Tuesday, I do Tuesday. And if Tuesday only takes up one line, then it only takes up one line. Um, that way you save a lot of space in your notebook. Um, if you're just gonna do things this way, I don't know why you wouldn't just buy a planner like a, a traditional diary planner um, as opposed to the bullet journal. But a lot of people do it, so I should not um, cast dispersions. Uh, Y'all gotta do it your way. Um, this one gives a lot of different examples of different headings you could use. It's got the different signifiers. And then it's um, tracking, it's clearly tracking what this person is drinking. Uh, they've got a cocktail on Wednesday night. Um, and it's tracking the weather as well, but it's quite, like these are quite detailed artistic um, drawings if you're really, uh, a good doodler, which I'm not, uh, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so those are some cute examples. Um, the symbols, now we get to the symbols. Okay, so oddly, instead of doing just a regular circle, they've done a half filled in circle. And that means this is a task to do. Now, I think that's really, really bizarre. I, I can't think of anyone who would fill in part of the circle unless it was actually like a partially completed task. I don't know why you would um, not use an open circle and then sort of fill it in as you accomplish part of the task. Oh my gosh, this thing doesn't even work. Not only is it broken, but it, it doesn't even have ink in it really. So that's terrible. Anyway. Um, that's really bizarre. Anyway, and then your completed task is a filled in circle. That's fairly standard. An event is an eight pointed star. Notes are just a dash line, which is a complete rip off of the bullet journal method. That's like copied exactly. Moving forward, same thing. That's a copy of writer's method. Um, however, scheduled is uh, a, double, a double arrow instead of an arrow in the other direction. High priority gets, a, I don't even know what that thing is called, but um, I don't know why you would use that for high priority, like as opposed to the eight pointed star, whatever. And then inspiration gets two like quotation marks. Now the weird thing about this book is that it's been extreme, like it's spent six pages on different, uh, no, eight pages, sorry, eight pages on different things that you quote unquote need for your dot journal. And then when it comes to symbols, they haven't explained the symbols at all. So they haven't explained what the difference between moving forward is versus scheduling. Um, most of us know what that means, but if you are literally new to this system, um, which is the only reason you would need this book, right? Like the rest of us know how to bullet journal. Uh, none of these are gonna make much sense to you, which I think is really funny. They haven't explained it at all. And then they sort of jump into, oh, and you can do other types of pages. Oh, so you could have a habit tracker, you could have a list, you could have a goal. Um, yeah, that's fairly obvious. Uh, and then we have some examples of habit trackers, just a smiley face, sad face um, system there, a little cute um, birthdays tracker with balloons in it. And that's it, those are the examples. Um, and then the last page is just telling you to have fun and do, like make it you, yours, make it yours. Uh, do it the way you want to do it. So that's kind of a, it's a cute little journal, I guess. It's helpful for someone who's never done this before, um, but it's not super helpful because it really only gives fairly basic introductions to each of these concepts. Like, like it's good to introduce the concept of a year planner, but then to only give one example of one and to give an example that isn't, um, doesn't give you much space is kind of, 
not great. Like if, if this was all I knew of bullet journaling, this would put me off of it. As would that daily calendar page thing. Uh, that would really put me off a lot because what what is the point of that that's, that makes it different from a diary um, traditional planner? And then the symbols, the fact that they don't explain the symbols very well at all. I just don't think that they're gonna like, I don't know how they think that they're gonna make money off of that trademark because no one wants to call their system the point journal and also they haven't bothered to actually really define the system itself as being any different from the bullet journal method. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got a new notebook that's a bit, I mean, it's, it's cute, but it's, it's cheaply made. You've got a pen that doesn't work and is broken. There you go. That's your uh, point journal, point journal kit from Kinkler which you can buy at Target Australia. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a pen test. Um, actually, let's have a flip through of the journal. I think it's fairly basic, but basically you open up, it's blank on the first page. Um, there's the sort of, I don't know what they call that, but the, um, the front page. And then it jumps straight into page one. Um, the dots are fairly, they're like, they're like a standard faintness. They're, um, Easy to see, but not too dark, not too noticeable. So pretty standard. And then the numbers themselves are like black. Like that's quite a dark number. They're pretty small as well, which is all right. Um, but yeah, quite dark. So you can see the numbers very clearly, the page numbers. Um, oh, you can see the binding already on page two. You can see that it's um, stitched in. And yeah, it looks like there's signatures in here, but like it's quite visible. Um, it is quite a flexi cover, which is nice, um, but yeah, uh, sort of vegan leather. Okay, um, I'm gonna go to the back page. Yeah, let's do a bit of a pen test. Oh gosh. So this definitely is never gonna lay flat. You'd have to hold it down all the time. Okay, let's flip that baby over. Um, you can see there's a bit of, I mean, that's normal to get a uh, print through. Um, there's a bit of ghosting. This, um, the easy touch has actually come through quite badly. Like it's, um, it's kind of punched through almost. Like it's, it's coming, uh, I can't describe what I'm trying to say, but obviously it's like, it's left, it's debossed. <laughs> and um, it's almost like you can see the ink coming through almost. Um, whereas with like the fine liner, is, is much better in that regard. Um, with this notebook, you might wanna use a fine liner as they recommend. And like the Micron has done really well as well, the Pigma Micron. Anyway, yeah, so there's your pen test in that very, very cheap, um, what's the name of the company again? Hinkler uh, Point Journal Kit. And I have just had a look at them online and it turns out the reason why they're trademarking Point Journal is because they're actually selling more of these journals on their own, not in the kit, and they're calling it the Point Journal. So it's, but it's, I'm assuming exactly the same where you get like, I think there's 180 pages in the ones on the website, um, but it's literally just a dot grid journal with numbered pages. So. I don't know why they're calling it point journal and trying to trademark it, but like just just make a journal, a high quality journal that has dot grid in it, like other people do. Yeah, whatever. You have to get your corner of the the really cheap, crappy stationery market, I guess. So there you go. There's Hinkler's dot journal. No, sorry, point journal. Um, that's the kit. And then they've got the point journal system, which is a sorry excuse for the bullet journal method, but whatever. Um, it is a sort of, I guess it's a cheap option for you if you like cheap notebooks to do your bullet journaling in. So there you go. That's the Hinkler point journal kit.